Good morning, my Chipping students. I hope you all are utilizing your time in this lockdown doing something creative and knowledgeable besides gaming. Today, I'll tell you a story. But first, I would like to ask you all, do you know who is Bond? I'm not talking about James Bond. It's about Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is an Indian author of children's books. His schooling is from Shimla, and for further studies, he went to UK. At the age of 17, he began writing his first novel, The Room on the Roof. He has been acclaimed for many works like Crazy Times with Uncle Ken, Time Stops at Chumley, and many more. You can see, here I have made a collage of different books written by Ruskin Bond. Do you know any literary piece or work of Ruskin Bond? If you know, just write it in the comment section below. Ruskin Bond won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992 for his collection of essays, Our Trees Still Grow in Dehra, which was written in 1991. The eyes have it have alternate titles. The eyes are not here, the girl on the train, and there are many more. Mr. Ruskinborn lives in the lap of nature and most of his stories are set in Missouri. And we all know this, how beautiful this place is. Now let's start with the story. The eyes have it. In the story, a man is sitting alone in a train compartment en route to Rohana, when a girl boards the train assisted by a couple, who the narrator resumes her appearance. The narrator is blind, able to see only light and darkness, so he cannot make out the girl's appearance, only that he likes the sound of her voice and the sound of her slippers. His voice startles her after she sits down, and he attributes this to her. People with good eyesight fail to see what is right in front of them. Only later is the irony of the statement is made clear. The narrator decides to see if he can keep her from realizing that he is blind. They talk about where each of them is going and he tries to get her to describe the scenery outside, though she likely assumes he is asking about what it's like to be blind. She is pleased when he tells her that she has an interesting face because she says she's tired of hearing that she has a pretty face. When the train stops, he knows she will forget their encounter, but he feels he will remember it forever. He smells her perfume just as she is getting up to leave, and he hears some confusion in the doorway. Presumably, this is caused by her inability to see the young man waiting to enter the compartment. It is only when this young man tells the narrator that the young woman who is blind does the narrator understand the irony of the situation. Let's read the conversation between the narrator and the man who entered the compartment. I is the narrator here and he is the man who just entered the compartment. You must be disappointed, he said. I am not nearly as attractive a traveling companion as the one just left. She was an interesting girl. I said, can you tell me, did she keep her hair long or short? I don't remember, he said, sounding puzzled. It was her eyes I noticed, not her hair. She had beautiful eyes, but they were of no use to her. She was completely blind. Didn't you notice? Now let's talk about the theme of the story. Blind man's life in general is difficult. At the time that Bond wrote of a conversation that the three passengers had and his resulting intention to portray the problem of hypocrisy in casual conversation. In this piece of writing, Bond relates the blind man's story of a journey whose meeting with another blind young girl passenger were actually mild hypocritical. Our next topic is irony alert. Now do you know what irony is? It is a poetic device. Irony is a literary technique in which what is written or stated is different from or the opposite of what is expected. For example, when a person says the opposite of what they mean. 
In the story, author employs two blind people as his main characters, yet neither knows the other is blind. The narrator describes the series outside, hoping the girl doesn't realize his blindness. To continue the ruse, he tells that the girl has an interesting face. The narrator ends up fooling himself. Apparently, he also didn't realize that the girl is blind too. Now, what are the lessons learned here? We should not hide our shortcoming. Instead, we must appreciate what we have and not complain about what we don't. Be grateful for what you have. Let's go for question answer round. Question number one. Who is the author of the story? The eyes have it. That's right. The author of the story, the eyes have it, is Ruskin Bond. Question number two. What do people with good eyesight fail to see? If you remember, I narrated this when I was telling you the story. People with good eyesight fail to see what is right in front of them. Question number three. Whose voice startled the girl? Yes, that's right. The voice of the narrator startled the girl. Question number four. Why do you think the narrator wanted to keep his blindness a secret? Seriously, why do you think so? That narrator pretended that he can see the things. The narrator wanted to keep his blindness a secret because he was probably embarrassed by his condition. Question number five. Do you think the title of the story is appropriate? Why? The title of the story is appropriate because our eyes are one of the most fascinating parts of the body and they are the first feature to be noticed in a human face. So students, go ahead, read the chapter that I have provided with the answer key and uh, happy reading. Bye-bye.